Hello and welcome to Eye on Humanity. I am your host, Letitia Ponce Diaz, sort of your host. Uh, I'd like to describe myself as being an observer tonight, uh, as uh, being a learner tonight, and hopefully uh, coming up with questions that you might be wondering about. We have a great show and we have a beautiful lady sitting here who's ready to tell us all about herself. Zina Romanda, welcome to your own show here. <laughs> well, hi. I don't feel like it's really my show. I'm just kind of a visitor for a few minutes. You are. You're a visitor for a few minutes. You're going to take off in about five minutes, right? So we right. better get to know you before you leave here. Okay. Um, in all seriousness, you, and I'm going to say this correctly, you do what is called a full body manifestation, and Saint Germain speaks through you. Well, Saint Germain enters the body, and my consciousness, consciousness completely leaves. Um, and I go to a, a plane that is of another dimension. Okay. And Before you start describing that, mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit. Okay. How and when did all of this start? Well, it was um, in April of 86, and there was a lot of energy in the house. And I, and you, you could feel energy we could in the house? Sense it was like electric. We? My husband and I. Okay. And then whenever I passed the area where the energy was most, you know... Um, Concentrated? Right. Uh -huh. Then I stopped and I was it was over in a direction of a plan in our house mm -hmm. and I started feeling like a human sparkler and then he came over to me and said are you all right are you all right and I could hear him but I couldn't respond it was like I was almost like paralyzed or something although it was I wasn't afraid in that moment and then mm -hmm. I went dark and went black mm -hmm. and then a little bit later I came back and my husband told me what happened and I just didn't know what to think I thought he was pulling my leg and and all right were you frightened by the experience or was there something pleasant about it initially I was I was mm, scared like anybody else would be scared if something unknown had happened to them and they didn't know what to make of it yeah um, so he convinced me to sit down on the couch and let it happen again and so I, I sat down on the couch and did my spiral meditation. Now, how did you know to do that? And how did you know that doing that would help bring the experience back again? I didn't. It was just kind of trial and error. I just thought, well, it's the only thing I know how to do, so we'll just see and what mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. And I had learned that in a, a meditation class mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I had never had any training. I never had any thought of being um, um, an instrument for something like this, I, you know, it just yeah. never occurred to me. So I sat down and did the only thing I knew how to do, that was the only class I'd ever taken. To meditate. Right. And two hours later, I came back and I said, well, did anything happen? And my husband said, before I answer that, I'd like for you to listen to this. And so he turned on the recorder, because this time he had recorded it, and it blew me away. I was crying, I was shaking, I was scared. I didn't know what to make of it or what to do with it. And that was Germain, St. Germain speaking through you and your husband had recorded it. Right, and um, he had identified himself as St. Germain, and so my husband came back and he said, have you ever heard the name St. Germain? And I said, no, I have the foggiest idea. And he said, neither have I. So we went and got our books and looking on the index to see if we could figure out who St. Germain was. And we called some of our friends saying, have you ever heard the name St. Germain before? Do you have any idea what it's all about? Mm -hmm. And so gradually we're finding out more and more about who he is. Um, in, 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 and I will find out in more detail who he is, but in a few words, can you well, identify him? Well, his energy him? has been known before as Joseph, the mm -hmm, father of mm -hmm. Jesus, Christopher Columbus, um, Francis Bacon, mm -hmm. um, 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 let me think, Prokles, the Greek philosopher. So he's been around. Right, and he had a lot to do with the Declaration of Independence and beginning this country. And he was also, this is exciting, I love this part. All right, tell us this part, um, this is exciting. When, when he was the prophet Samuel, mm -hmm. and... Um, when he had a lot to do with the inspiration of the beginnings of the, the Declaration of Independence in right. this country and everything, he, his energy was so involved in it, he came to be known as Uncle Sam. And, his energy did. But this you have learned through St. Germain telling you. That and uh, other people you, right? that have been familiar with his energy for years okay. and years and years. And very soon now we're going to get ready because you are actually right here in, in front of us. We've got friends in the audience. Um, you're going to go away. And we're going to actually see you do this. We're going to see you get very quiet. We're going to see you do your meditation. And uh, we're not going anyplace. We're going to be watching. So any time that you're ready, we'll let you go. And okay. we'll welcome St. Germain. OK. Right? Um, sure. And um, it's not anything Anything you want I'm to say before to you do. go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's not something that I'm afraid to do uh -huh. because it's become almost second nature to me. And, and through feeling the love vibration and knowing that my, I'm always safe and secure and that nothing is going to happen, 
um, I am very, very comfortable with it now. Okay. And, and um, so I want to share this with the world and whoever is open to it. And, you know, there's just a lot of love. And here goes. Okay. Let's watch. I begin by centering so that my consciousness can completely leave my body and allow St. Germain to totally incarnate into it. In this case, there isn't a blending of energies at all. It's um, fully capacitated with St. Germain's energy, so I'm not at all consciously aware of what's occurring while he's here in my body. Where I go is to other dimensions to experience other realities. I don't bring back any conscious memory of most of them. Sometimes there's fragments like purple legs and things like that, but usually it's just a void of time where um, I don't have any conscious memory at all. It's always with mutual choice and agreement that this happens, and I'm not afraid at all. He expresses so much love and so much respect for us that there's just not anything at all to be afraid of. I get into a center state of being, and I go through a spiral meditation that was taught by Dr. Bru Joy. And when my chakras have all been opened, I raise my kundalini energy, and I feel it moving up my spine. When it reaches near the crown area, I feel as though I'm surrounded by something. It kind of feels like a tunnel. And at the end of it is a gigantic brilliance. And I seem to just flow towards it. The closer I get, the faster I go until it's something like warp speed. I don't ever remember reaching the light. I get almost to it. And then the next thing I know, I'm back. So, here I go. Greetings, my beloved. Greetings, St. Germain. How are you this day, little Todd? <clears throat> I'm doing quite well. How are you? Is there, is there any other way to be but the one of us? <laughs> Sometimes we forget. Welcome. Indeed, it is my honor. We were talking to the woman, Azina, um, and we started asking her a little bit about who St. Germain was, mm -hmm. and she gave us several lifetimes and several identities. Can you expand a little bit on who you are? I am that which life itself reveals. I am indeed that which you call your mirror. That which you gaze upon is the reflection of yourself. Indeed, I come unto you because I love you and you have called that which is the essence of the Council of Light upon this plane to allow and love and embrace you back into yourselves. I am your equal. I am your brother that abides with you in communion. That which is the brilliance and the grandeur of you, I understand. I am here so that you may understand it. All right, two things here. Council of Light, can you mm. expand a little bit on that? That which is a consciousness, a body of essence energy that is associated with all that is, with that which you call the grand creative force, 
of life, the essence of God, if you will. And it creates its own heart's desire to come upon this plane, to allow the entities recognition of their own divine sourceness. You are here so that each one of us in the studio and outside the studio can recognize their divinity or their beauty. Indeed, to open the flower of you as it were, to become a garden of gods resplendent in a ray. And truly, my beloved, it is my honor and I bow in humility in the recognition, in awe, in wonderment of that which is you. It is my honor to participate in this fashion. Why do you say that when I think I speak for many of us, those of us that are interested in metaphysics and spirituality have a tendency to put entities, beings like you, on a pedestal. And our feeling is that you are greater, you are more evolved, you are higher, and yet you say it's an honor to be here amongst us. Mm. My grandest gift that I wish to give you is for you to see yourself as I do. There is no pedestal that is higher than another. All are of equal height. All are to be revered, for all are divine. Was there a particular reason, St. Germain, that you chose this time, maybe not necessarily this woman, but this time to come with this kind of um, mission? Mm, indeed. Changes are in the wind, have you not noticed? <laughs> yes, I was hoping you'd talk about those a little bit. <laughs> there are many to be sure, and we shall discuss some of them. Right. Okay. However, there is a shift in an entire frequency band upon the plane, from the Piscean era to the Aquarian era, that which some call the New Age. And it is an understanding of the release of dogma, ritual, and limitation into the understanding of the beauty of life in the flow, to be free-flowing, if you will. What can we do to not only be more prosperous, but be happier at this time when you might say there's a, a type of recession, when pocketbooks are straining, when people are having a hard time paying bills, saving money, buying mm. houses? And life is a grind, eh? And life is a grind, <laughs> yes. But you know you may allow this grindstone to polish you up. Hmm? Okay. Mm. That what you call a uh, purchasing of a lay awake plan. Mm? Lay awake plan. And yes. they fret about the business, that which if you don't have any, you go out of. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh. Mm. And they place themselves on a budget that allows you to pay as you go if you don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've been observing us a long time, haven't you? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. It causes concern. Mm, but prosperity hides itself in thought before it surrenders itself to the purse. That which is prosperity is not the heights of attainment, it is the hearts of attunement. That is not that which you call your sleepless nights. It is wide awake nows. Truly. That which is so fervently seek and search, that which you so wish to be experienced in your life, that which you so desperately look for, you are looking from. Do you know you are the epitome of prosperity and wealth and abundance in your own beingness? But you do not see this, you only see the void. You do not see the abundance of emptiness. You see the emptiness in your bank account, as you call it, and frustrate yourself. You pay luxury tax on your purse. You pay income tax on what is contained within it. Sales tax on anything you take out of it. Mm -hmm. And you tax your soul in the contemplation of your taxes. Yes. <laughs> Taxing subject here. <laughs> Truly. Yes, okay, we do that. Granted, I, we can't argue that. We mm. do that. It becomes quite a pressure cooker. But are you saying that we should be very, quote, spiritual here and think of all the wealth and fulfillment and enrichment I have in my heart oh. and not worry about the bills or ever having a house in Malibu or driving a Mercedes? Do you know what real prosperity is? It is joyous unconcern for possessions. So you are saying that? In a manner of speaking, but paradoxically, when you express in this fashion, your possessions are abundantly coming onto you. Say that again for me, please. Mm. I miss that. When you release the pressure yes. Yes. about the positions, 
they free flow onto you through the river of your own provisions. So let go of having to have the material The desperation. Mm. And that, that works for a lot of things, doesn't it? Indeed. You no, know, that is what has caused uh, many contemplations of weddings for an entity stops searching so fervently for their mate and they pop around the corner. Yes. <laughs> and they stop searching for a, a life to be within the womb and all of a sudden they are rolling a crib within the household. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That which is economy, it is changing. Your dollar bill will no longer have the validity that it has had in your past eras of time. Right. Mm. This is all right. You will be basing your economy upon one another, the energy that is contained within you, rather than a symbol. So we're saying that on an international level or a global level, um, the value of the dollar going down, the stock market fluctuating, all of these things are not really going to matter because we're not going to be based on what the dollar's worth? In the matter of speaking, um, that which is your stock market has caused quite a bit of analysis paralysis in your time. Mm, and so is your dividend, percentum per annum perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> My stockbroker would love to talk to you. And the Street Brothers, Dun and Brad, huh? Yes, yes, right. Now, so. Mm, that which is your global economy will come to understand a freeing of their own economic structure. They also will not be based upon that which is of paper. And they will be allowed freedom to flow through the countries, to flow through the cultures, to flow even through the land and the peoples, because the energy is what they will be expending and exchanging. So this sounds like a great improvement. I'm not understanding it totally, but generally will be based on a different system and it's going to be one that's for the better. Indeed. So we shouldn't worry. Oh, but of course not. Well, Do you know who the grandest financier of your Bible is? The grandest financier of my Bible? Mm. Noah, he floated his stock when the whole world was in liquidation. <laughs> I, I knew you were a comedian. I wasn't too sure <laughs> when you were going to sneak some of those in on us. <laughs> and you can too. Yes, I can occasionally. You talked about giving countries more freedom. We sometimes tend to think that money and wealth ah, gives us freedom. First of all, your response to that? That which is freedom is the option of leisure rather than the pressure of what you call your rush hour. Mm -hmm. The hour when everything is such a rush that you are at utter standstill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That which is the option of joy as a choice rather than a result will be the understanding of all your nations interglobally. And as you understand this, they will have the freedom to allow the flow through their culture, through the resources that they exhibit even within their own being. Do you know that the grandest resource of any nation is its consciousness? Currency is only consciousness, you know. And consciousness is the only currency upon marketplace of life. I don't quite understand how currency is consciousness. Because your dollar bill represents your consciousness. If you are in a depressed state and an impoverished manner of resonance, you will be without your dollar. It mm. is your consciousness that allows its presence or non-presence. So as we think, that's, so you how are. We, mm. that's what we manifest. Indeed. Um, as our economy, well, you've answered this already, really, as the economy changes, our perspective, our attitudes about freedom change along with them? You will understand freedom as a ring in your heart rather than a ring in your nose. Gold, gold <laughs> ring on my nose. So, just kidding. A gold ring in your heart. The ring of freedom, of liberty and justice for all. Truly, you will not have the pressure associated with it. For freedom will allow all nations to honor one another to respect one another's differences, to truly flow from nation to nation without judgment. You know that this is, at least from my part over here, it's hard to grasp all of this at once. It seems like such a big, wonderful overview. And if I had to go home and tell everybody what I, what I learned, basically I'd say things are gonna really get better. That's basically 
the message and some of our belief systems are not going to be the same and some of the things we depend on are not going to exist that which is called the holding of your currency because you feel another will deplete you of it mm -hmm. will not be the case in your times to come for all is really of equality do you know this there is really not lacking upon the plane but it's only a difference of perspective a difference of consciousness of focus so people who think they don't have enough or feel deprived will be deprived if they wish do you know if you distributed equally all the prosperity of the globe to every entity that is existing in your now but in two years of your time the ones that were impoverished before will be impoverished again because it is their consciousness so how do we change that change their consciousness and you can change theirs only when you change yours for well, you are their mirror and they are yours and you that's one of that's one of your missions or one of your jobs to it change is one of my desires to allow you to reflect upon the mirror of god i am of that which is the representation of the god you are to understand that abundance is always with you it sounds very simple doesn't it it is simplicity is always the ultimate unlimitedness do you know freedom flows most naturally in unlimited thought um, changes in what they call masculine and feminine energy before I get into the actual question can you just give us a little bit of information on masculine and feminine energy I will describe what you call sexuality okay uh, it is polarities with a twist and a bump in the grind eh? <laughs> Oh, but that is an encounter of a different kind. <laughs> yes. It is truly the understanding of the balance of polarities and harmony of that which is male and female energy. That it is coming into grand shifting upon your plane. So each of us, male and female, have both masculine and energy within. The whole. They are not negating one another. They are two parts of a whole. Two parts of a whole. Okay. Now, the changes in this masculine and feminine energy um, are expressing themselves, itself, whatever, in, in, in our sexuality. Mm. Can you expound on that? That which you call the change in female energy is quite natural as they reclaim their power because your mother earth is female energy. Mm -hmm. Even the planet you abide upon is resonant to the abundance of that which is nurturing of essence. That which you call your masculine energy, mm -hmm. mm? it is power, thrust, provision, organization. Your female energy, feminine, is love, reception, nurturing, intuition. Right. And truly, each entity upon the plane will begin to experience both in a harmonious balance. Are we out? Of balance right now you have been in your centuries past you're e equalizing yourselves of now st. Germain does that mean that from the part of a from a woman's standpoint mm. we will be less afraid or more willing to be powerful to take a stand mm. to be more aggressive not aggressive mm -hmm. but more understanding of your own power sourceness not powerlessness okay from a male perspective, mm. does that mean me men will be more willing to be intuitive, more sensitive, intuitive? Receptive, mm -hmm. nurturing. But will they be more willing or will they go kicking and screaming all the way? That depends on them. So can we say then that this masculine and feminine energy and the balancing of these two, how will this manifest itself sexually? What are we talking about? Less fear and trepidation about intimate relationships and less diseasement, that what you call the grand diseasement upon the plane, that what you call AIDS. It will phase out, shall we say, as harmony comes into play. All right. These changes that we're talking about in masculine and feminine energy, they'll happen worldwide? It will naturally be global because Mother Earth herself is changing and stretching her limbs, as it were, and allowing herself to birth new understanding. And as she births new understanding, the points of consciousness that are participating with her, called the peoples of the lands, mm -hmm. will also birth new understanding within their own beingness. What can we do now to sort of implement or help this change along? 
allow yourself to experience any aspect of female or male as you gaze upon it as that which is your own experience of life. Are you saying there is no right, there is no wrong, a thought, a feeling, and I'm going to be very you know, honest here, an urge, something comes up, as long as you're not hurting anybody, express it, love it, don't judge it. I will tell you this, my beloved. That which is masculine energy is of your world consciousness. It is that which will not allow a void or a space in understanding. It is a desire to fill the spaces of all understanding. That is why there is such an urgency to understand now. And that which is its complement is the female energy, awesome in power of allowance of life to be. And do you know, when this balance occurs globally, that allowance to be an automatic understanding will coexist. This is how the changes will occur. It shall be several years in your hint's time, 20 or 25. These changes in our sexuality and our masculine and feminine energies obviously are going to have effect on relationships. Mm. Maybe you've answered this already. Does it basically mean that we're going to have more intimate, more fulfilling relationships? Do you know every single moment of an entity's life, they are fervently seeking themselves? This is what relationships are all about, experience with themselves. They go forth an utter desire, and yet they have a very straightforward way of dodging themselves from time to time. And they truly understand not that it is themselves they are gazing upon, and so they feel unfulfilled, ever searching, ever seeking for the perfect relationship. Now, the shift in consciousness, the changes, will allow an entity to understand that everything they gaze upon is part of themselves. Every consciousness, every atom upon the plane is a relationship with their own being, for they share the same energy. And in this understanding, of course, it is global, intergalactic to be sure. Therefore, once we start realizing that you are a mirror for me, if I'm in relationship with you, I'm really seeing things about myself, mm. and I'm looking for myself. Indeed, and you will no longer trudge the path of judgery. One-on-one -on -one relationships can be applied to the way we would work our relationships with countries, with galaxies. It does not work. It is interaction. But I understand of which you okay. speak. Indeed. For when you understand and honor one another in your difference, unity and diversity in one, that is how you will have relationships in respect of one another and unity and harmony at the same time. Do you mean you said it would be several years? Mm. Again, are the changes in our consciousness happening slowly or are we in for some even greater massive awakening in the next... You truly are in for what you call a quantum leap. For, for your scientific community, even of themselves, have traditionally been masculine. And now they are shifting into feminine gears. Because they are allowing themselves to be intuitive with the laboratory experiments. Not so rigidity mm -hmm. of pathway as they have been in formal time. And are these changes happening because people who are more aware or who are more interested or more sensitive are thinking along these lines? Is that what you mean by the consciousness? It is not necessarily a conscious thinking. Oh. It is that which is of the essence of the vibrations that are upon the plane now. And you automatically participate with them and have a relationship with them for you exist within them. And as you exist within them, you are interweaving a tapestry between every entity upon the globe. Even those entities in your China, in your Russia, that you do not even think about consciously. You're interweaving a relationship with them through your very thought. To go from intergalactic and international back down into someone's home. A mother and a daughter, a mother and a son. I know you don't like the word advice, you don't give advice, so I'll have to choose my, my, my words carefully here. Expound, respond to this. How does a mother relate better 
to a child. That is not better. <laughs> I have two again. comments. That which is respect of one another's divinity, mm -hmm. one another's power, sourceness, mm -hmm. one another's validity of life will allow each other to complement mm -hmm. the mirror before them. And also, my beloved, that which is partaking with awe, the squeal of delight of a babe, the sweetness of a breast of a woman, the mask of the perspiration of a man. Experiencing this as all aromas and fragrances of you will allow you truly relationship and kinship with all of life. For within that that you call trust and knowingness of another entity will be the breath of your own experience and you shall indeed tread the silvery strand of trust with wisdom and understanding. Okay, so we're ready to get into our main topics today, fear and prophecy. And I don't think anyone out there has any problem relating, at least to the first one, fear. Indeed. You must hear this all the time. We're afraid of everything. We're afraid of relationships and intimacy and failure and... You're you afraid of fear. We're afraid of fear. Why? It is innate, contained within the being, to be afraid of that which is the unknown. The allowing and embracing of it is stepping into the unknown and allowing it to become the known. Mm? And not being part of the frozen chosen. Oh gosh, are you saying <laughs> frozen, frozen chosen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that means that if I am afraid of something, mm. instead of standing on the uh, city limits, holding, hoping it's a, a red light forever so I don't have to cross that street, you're saying... Understand it as your friend, get to know it. Does that mean you have to experience that which you are afraid of? It is not to have to, but ultimately you shall. That's, that's depressing news. Not necessarily, my beloved, for you may experience it in emotion without experiencing it as your reality. Capturing the emotion of your wisdom, as you call it. If you can experience your fear and emotion without having to actually experience it in reality, mm. does this mean you deliberately sit, contemplate, and let the feelings come up? Is that what you do? No, my beloved. You understand that which is awesome love and the issue it falls to everything, and then the fear is automatically transmuted. I, I want you to, I need, I need you to be more specific. All Give right. me an example. For example, your fear of your economic collapse. Mm -hmm. mm. Many entities stew about this. That which is called fear of earth changes also. Mm -hmm. Your Quakers and Shakers that are to come. <laughs> Truly, that which is tremor and tremble may be a mirthquake, not necessarily a earth shaking. A too. mirthquake. <laughs> Allow the belly to bounce and jest with life. Truly, when you do this, you are in alignment and you view everything in that moment with love and lightheartedness. Your fear dissipates as a mist when the sun pierces the horizon. Laughter and joy aligns you enough so that whatever one or two or three things you have been afraid of need not be actually experience because you've aligned yourself and that laughter and that joy what cancels everything not cancels embraces and transmutes there is a difference the validity is still there saint germain laughter is not on my it's not on my card here it's not on my list but this is fascinating mm. because what i'm hearing you say is that laughter and joy is one is a great way to align yourself uh, but it truly is that is how much healing occurs when there is trauma yeah. in your trauma, <laughs> did you, you get may that? transmute the tragic <laughs> into magic. I wish you would repeat that because there were chuckles along the way. When there is trauma in your drama, you may transmute your tragic into magic. Okay. With child's play, light-hearted laughter. That which you call your ancient saying that only the children shall enter the kingdom of heaven, it was speaking of a consciousness not a youth or age, 
a consciousness of childlikeness. And when a child is crying in the dark, afraid of the boogeyman, mm -hmm. as it is called, mm -hmm. it is only because it is unfamiliar. So enlighten that which is the unfamiliar. Step into it with your own light. Now, that which you call your grand changes of the earth mm -hmm. that are so feared, the there earth. shall be some, but it need not be of dire circumstance. Hmm? It may be a dance of delight. And when you experience this change that is coming forth, it is Mother Earth birthing, stretching her limbs, allowing new life to issue forth. So it is a joyous event, a point of celebration, not of trepidation. We, now, I will tell you about a few changes you did not know about. Okay. Would you desire this? Yes, of course. Mm that are not to be feared, my beloved. There is that which you would call a crystal sheet. It is a light wave circuitry and allows indeed consciousness and technology to be in relationship to one another. It is multiversal, interdimensional engineering. And when this, that is called your conductive metallic plastic, your crystal, your magnesium, your iridium, mm -hmm. in conjunction with one another, comes forth upon the plane. You will understand relationship with intergalactic understandings, and you have no fear of what is upon your plane anymore, for you will find it is beyond the doorway of the time continuum as well. It is all about you. It is familiar then. Now, you have upon that which is your plane a grand tide of cosmic light coming forward, the planetary life wave. It is a shift in the energy bands that are encircling your Earth that will allow everything to be superconductive, even you. So when you have fear, it is automatically magnified. When you have calm, it is automatically magnified and mirrored to the rest of the Earth. So indeed, it will be of wisdom and alignment to be of calm within the storm, likened unto a stew pot, a teapot, singing truly, even when it is up to its neck in hot water. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so the Quakers and then the Shakers and all of this may, may come about. When I see a picture of this, I see that there will be some destruction possibly some people dead, but you're saying it's all on how we look at it, it's all mm -hmm. in the attitude that we take about it, it's all in the way we feel about it. That's the way it's always been, right? Indeed. And you can ultimately allow another's prophecy to be a point of your fear, to be a point of that which brings forth shaking and wavering in your stockings, sleepless nights, nightmares as you call them, or you can allow your own knowingness of your power to recreate and allow the drama to be as you wish. This is a simple question, but what exercise or what can we do when we start seeing negativity or feeling negativity and feeling fear. Is there something that we can mechanically do? Mm. Allow them to understand the blessing that you issue forth unto them. State unto them, blessed be you, and I honor you, for you have the power to create your life as you wish, and I wish you to know this. This is why we are all here, to allow you to know that you are the power source, the key to your own creation. You created this epic drama, you can recreate it if you wish. There are not necessarily your quakers and tremors upon the horizon. That which is a dire prophecy has been much chitter chatter about upon the plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is a lot of ballyhoo that you all rally to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you practice these things or do they just sort of come out? I'm kidding. <laughs> I know. It is a resonance of spontaneity. Do you ever get this reaction where 
we sometimes feel overwhelmed by what you're telling us? Do you get that At a lot? At times, but I speak to not only what is before me, I speak to other parts of you as well. That which is prophecy upon the plane is given forth in every moment of your time by you, by your breath, by your thought, by your verbiage, by your action. Everything that you do or experience is a prophecy in and of itself. For you create your next now moment, your next choice of experience. So we really, it would behoove us to think beautiful thoughts, positive things, be in the Const joy of the moment. What else is there? Constant nowness. Do you find that many of us are rarely n here, being here now? But oh, truly. You consider yourself part of uh, what you call future consciousness, likened unto your des descendants that reside in your future tense. Truly. There are many of you that so frustrates yourself about your past and about what is to be feared about your future that you do not even consider your life. It is a direct avoidance of your now. You indeed indefinitely postpone living because of that which is the uncertainty of your now. I wish you to go forth and allow yourself to be knee deep and joy, and abundant prosperity, and play. Anxieties may come, frustrations may come. Allow them to join you in the experience of play. For only through play and joining hands around this your globe, that is truly the essence of unity in consciousness and prophecy in prosperity, in relationships, joining, merging, you with you. Everyone's prophecy is different. You're all the same essence viewed from different mirrors. And your prophecies are all different. And your universes are all different. You know this? For you exist in your universe and your neighbor exists in their own universe. The mm -hmm. own world. As we see it are really a different universe. As you create it through your imagination, your imagination is the dimension in which you exist. Mm -hmm. They're giving me that signal again mm -hmm. that we have about a minute. I'll say a very quick goodbye because I would rather I have you two say statements. I, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. You may indeed understand prophecy. It's not a sentence that has passed, but an opportunity to understand a choice of your now. And the choice is to be brought forth into bondage through another sphere, or to understand your own power to recreate the drama. Truly. Hmm? Mm -hmm. My parting comment? Yes. Mm. Live not in your past tense. Live not in your future tense. Live rather in your pleasant tense. <laughs> Always pleasant is life, if you wish. Thank you. Pleasant tense. Did you hear that? <laughs> I want to remember that one. Thank you, St. Germain. Thank you, my beloved. Thank you for allowing us into your homes and into your hearts. A reminder that I Am Humanity is brought to you by Reflections of Divinity. Let us know what you thought about all of this. Bye-bye.